Hi everybody, this is Randy from Randy's Roost and the Buy Annie Bag Makers group on Facebook. And I'm going to give you some ideas for quilting on Buy Annie bags. These ideas will work on any quilted bags. So these are all going to be straight line quilting ideas. You could also, of course, do free motion quilting if that's something you have the capability to do. Um, for now, we're just going to talk about straight line quilting. So just... A quick note, whenever you're making quilted bags, you should be using a walking foot, okay? Um, if one did not come with your machine, it's a very inexpensive tool that will save you a lot of frustration. So I do recommend getting one. So mine looks like this. I use a Janome machine. This is what mine looks like. Most of them look pretty much like this. Um, mine also came with a guide bar that snaps into the back. Um, some of these guide bars will slide in or you'll have the kind that can be used on either side. There's a few different kinds. So if you check your manual or look your machine up on YouTube, if you're not sure how to put this on or how to attach the guide bar. So the instructions on by any patterns will tell you, uh, the suggested way to quilt it is with straight lines, three quarters of an inch to an inch apart. And that's a perfectly fine way to do any by any bag. Uh, something to keep in mind, though, is you can adjust that width as you like. Of course, it's, it's your bag. You do what you want. But what I find works best is to adjust the scale of the quilting to the scale of the project. In other words, if you're making a large bag, you can space those lines a little bit farther apart. Um, if you're making a small bag, you don't want to put them put the lines too wide too far apart because it wouldn't really f match the look of the bag. Um, so the first design I have shown here is the suggestion from the pattern. These are one inch apart. And the way I would do this is I would make sure I'm working with a squared up piece of my bag and I would mark one line somewhere near the center of the piece. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center. Um, I would use a removable marking tool of some kind, always test it on a scrap to make sure it's really removable, and make one straight line in the middle, and then you're going to use your walking foot to quilt that first line. And then the reason you start in the middle is so that you don't get a bunch of wrinkling and bunching up as you work toward the other lines. So you're going to quilt that first line and then you're going to use your guide bar so you don't have to mark all these lines. You only have to mark one. So to quilt the next line, you're going to let your guide bar slide along your first line and then you can quilt your second line like that. And then ideally, you want to then quilt this way. Okay, And again, that's just to keep all your pieces smooth and avoid wrinkling and bunching. Okay, and then you're going to go this way. And then your original line was here, then you can start working the other way. Okay, so you use your guide bar to do this line, then come back the other way, etc. Down the line until you have them all the way across the piece of your back. If you want to add some interest to these lines, and a very easy way to do that is to add another line next to each one of those. Now, if you want to do this one, you might want to space your first line a little bit farther apart. It's up to you. The way I do this is I draw one line in the middle, just like with the previous design, add one line in each set, and then I go back and add the second line. I do it that way just to keep all the measurements consistent and make it easier for myself. So to add the second line, what I do is I just use the edge of my walking foot as a guide to add the second line. Another possible idea is a simple one inch grid. Um, for this one, I would start with the vertical lines as I described before, and then I would draw one horizontal line and follow similar steps to add the other horizontal lines. My only caution, once you start adding horizontal lines of any kind, you have to be extra careful when you add zippers or other components that are running this way to make sure it doesn't start to look wonky because these lines are going to be straight and then if you add something and it's a little bit off 
these are going to draw attention. These horizontal lines are going to draw attention to that. So that's just something to keep in mind with this one. And again, if you want to add more interest to the grid, you can go back and add another line to each line. Another nice idea that looks great on bags uh, is diamonds. And I do these in a similar way to doing the lines or the grid. I will choose an angle that looks nice to me and draw one line at that angle somewhere toward the center and then use my guide bar to add the other lines. Now, I show these at different widths just so you can see if you switch up the width, the spacing of these lines, you can get all different looks. So you can make long skinny diamonds or larger diamonds or you can do a mixture. It's entirely up to you. And um, if you are fussy cutting, uh, by fuss, oh, let me explain fussy cutting real quick, just in case somebody is not familiar with this. First of all, it's fussy cutting, not fuzzy. <laughs> I know some people misunderstand that word, or, or maybe it's autocorrect changing it, but it's fussy, F-U-S-S-Y. So when you fussy cut, what that means is you're choosing one image from a piece of fabric, and you're choosing to feature that image. So... I just, I made a bag for my mom recently and it had all this nice um, variety of animals all over the print, but she loves swans. So when I made the flap of the bag, I fussy cut to make sure the swan was front and center on the flap of the bag. Okay. So when you do that, a nice idea with the quilting is to use the quilting to sort of frame the image. So this is just one way to do it. There's many ways to do it. And you can use slanted lines and have them not cross. You can have them cross and get a nice secondary pattern. Um, you can leave space around your image or not. There's so much variety. Okay, and the last design I want to share with you is one that I made up. Um, the way I do this one is I will draw one line in each of these sets at angles that look interesting to me. And then I'll go back and add more lines using my walking foot as a guide. <clears throat> so a couple of notes of caution about this one, if you decide to try it. First of all, try not to have too many quilting lines intersecting because it looks sort of yucky. And what I've found is if you do do this, it compresses the soft and stable too much in one spot on your bag, which is not something you want happening. You don't want a, a big divot in your bag. That's kind of weird. And the other thing is, if you choose to do any lines that are supposed to be vertical or supposed to be horizontal, not slanted, make sure they're squared up. Because if they're a little bit off, it's going to look like a mistake instead of like fun improv. Okay, I think I covered everything I wanted to get to. Um, a couple of questions I'm asked a lot are what length I use for quilting. I use a four. Um... I use 50 weight cotton, which is not what Annie recommends. That's just what works best with my machine. Uh, you really should use what Annie recommends, which is superior threads, uh, so fine, number 50. That's the best thread. My machine does not like it. I don't know why. My machine is kind of a jerk, to be honest. <laughs> so, um, basting? I don't baste. <laughs> That's... Not something I find necessary with Soft and Stable. It has a bit of grippiness to it, and I find that that is plenty for me. I will do a line of quilting, smooth my pieces a little bit, and go to the next line, and it works fine for me. You can pin baste, you can spray baste, you do what works for you. Okay, uh, Soft and Stable is not fusible. There is no such thing as fusible Soft and Stable. Um, one new thing you might want to try, which Annie recommended on a recent episode of Live with Annie, is um, any now sells basting tape and that is one possible way to baste your pieces if you like so if i forgot anything or there's anything else you want me to show let me know and i'll make another video okay happy cutting and quilting bye